Hey YouTube, I just want to introduce you to a little project I've been working for uh, with for the last, I don't know, a couple of months here when I got this uh, brother word processor. Um, I picked this unit up because it's got something really unique to it. It's got a really wide screen, or I guess you could call it like a half height monochrome yellow CRT. So not even an amber CRT, but the phosphors are actually yellow. And I just thought it looked really cool. Like it's got quite the aesthetic to it. It's got actually got a nice keyboard to it and the display is super sharp. Um, and I thought, you know, maybe I could do something with this. So the first thing I tried to do was uh, I got the original motherboard and I dumped the ROM on it. And I was uh, reverse, like uh, I decompiled it to get the assembly code out and did my best to try to understand it, but I really can't. I'm not super strong with, with the assembly code, but what I thought I could do anyway, because there's gonna be limitations to this hardware. It was a, it was a very simple old microcontroller from you know late, late to mid eighties. And I thought if I could use something more modern, then I'd have a lot more power to do what I want to do, be it, you know, SD card uh, capability, Wi-Fi even. Um, so what I found was I have this uh, ESP32 variant board, which is uh, called VGA32 by TTGO. And it's really its intention is to hook up a VGA monitor and use PS2 keyboard and mouse input and you can use the FabGL graphics library with it um, that a lot of people have used online. But I don't see any examples of anybody using the, the uh, VGA32 to drive a TTL monochrome, like a digital monitor that's a CRT. And uh, so I had to set out and try to reverse engineer and find out how the display worked. And so... I had to pin out uh, the video signal, the horizontal sync, the free, uh, vertical sync with the oscilloscope, find out what the frequency is, find as much signal information as I could, and then, um, and then uh, basically use just a GPIO pin for the video because I don't want an analog signal, it's just gonna be an on-off signal. And so I bypassed the uh, kind of resistor network that made the VGA signal out of GPIO pins. And um, so by bypassing that and trying various, and this took a long time, like just trying different timing amounts, cause there's no information on this. I don't have a service manual or anything like that. Um, so I don't know what resolution this is or, or anything like that. So playing with a bunch of values, I finally got it. And uh, so, Okay, so here it is. I, I flipped it up It's on its side because then we can see what's going on on, on both sides of it here because I'm gonna talk about it. But there's our nice nice wide CRT in there. We've got the, uh, the CRT driver board there, power supply here for it, and the transformer. Um, underneath on the other side, you would have been able to see the original motherboard through here, but here we have our the small board that's the VGA32, all that power, way more power than the original one ever had. We're gonna be able to do all kinds of crazy stuff with this. Um, and uh, one thing that was really important for me to do was to get this original keyboard working. And uh, so to do that, um, this would have just been uh, a matrix of keys. That's all it was, there's no intelligence in here at all. Uh, the original, Came, uh, the original uh, membrane came off of here with all the contacts and went on to the original motherboard to be decoded by that. So we have to take over and do that. So I need something with a lot of GPIO. So in this case, I used an Arduino Teensy LC, low cost. Cost me like whatever, 12 bucks a long time ago. And uh, it's got plenty of GPIO. I was able to steal this connector from the old motherboard. Uh, put it onto this prototyping board and individually wire all of these pins for the rows and columns. And then I wrote some firmware to basically decode the key matrix, see which combinations of two keys uh, uh, are used for each one of the keys that are on here. 
and then I could go through and use lookup tables and basically send this across. Now, I originally wanted to do it with PS2 because the VGA32 supports uh, PS2 inputs, but the handshaking and the communication just wasn't working for me. And I'm like, why am I going through all this work to uh, adhere to this protocol when I'm simply just connecting these uh, uh, these um, UART serial lines together. So uh, that's what I did. So now I'm just passing the information straight across with my own kind of protocol. And uh, so as a result, it's not perfect yet, but you can see that I'm able to type on screen, enter like that. I'm still working on this backspace isn't quite working yet, but I'm doing all of this stuff from scratch, getting these characters to show up on screen where I want them to. And I'm just starting to write sort of what I would call consider like the operating system for this thing. So this has taken me quite a bit of time so far. I don't really have much more of a demonstration than that other than I did it. That was a big accomplishment getting that display working. It is super sharp. It looks really nice in person. And the keys, they work great and they, they respond really fast and everything. And uh, so really from here is refining that, getting the key, the, that key matrix, sending the right things across and uh, basically building like the OS, you know, that's, I, I want to build a bunch of applications to run on this thing, just my own kind of fun stuff, like do a replacement word processor, maybe try like uh, simple games and stuff like that, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. I, I even um, want to do some stuff with uh, maybe even bringing like a, another Arduino into the mix so I can have more pins and motor drivers and we could uh, actually control stuff and have some visual representation on the screen so we can have like you know like like a linear actuators and show uh, the coordinates and stuff so sort of like a cnc machine other industrial kind of machinery from a long time ago that used a crt to communicate so this is just going to be fun for me i just did it as a you know like so i can make my own computer you know so to speak so i will be providing update videos on as i go along uh, improving this thing and uh, of course, I'm going to share the code and, and you know, some instructions on, on what I did. And, and maybe other people with these word processors can do the same thing. And we could put these things to use because they're very limited in their software use. Um, another kind of a cool thing is uh, it's got the floppy drive on it. I mean, what if we could get, you know, throw this floppy drive in the bin? I mean, I think we could probably eventually figure it out, but maybe even using a modern uh, USB floppy controller or, uh, drive and uh, try to communicate with that and write files to it and, and load files from there and stuff, even just basic text stuff. Go through all this stuff, just a learning example, you know? So yeah, hopefully that describes a little bit of what I'm trying to do here. I don't 100% know myself. Um, just playing around and having fun. Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, please subscribe if you like my videos. All right, catch you on the next one. See ya.